In 2022, Netflix released a movie called White Noise. The plot? Well, it takes place in a little town in Ohio. A train passing through the town gets derailed, and it spills a bunch of toxic chemicals into the air. The residents of the town had to flee as they were breathing in toxic air. And coincidentally, a year after that movie was released, what started as fiction turned into real life. Smoke plumes, trains stacked side by side, all on fire. State of emergency in Ohio after a massive train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio. A freight train with tankers of toxic chemicals derailed and caught fire. Lighting up the night sky. Releasing thousands of gallons of hazardous chemicals. Into the air, forcing residents to evacuate. Police car came up and said, evacuate, evacuate, evacuate now. Get out, get out. It's an almost apocalyptic scene. The simulation has been broken, and there's a massive cover-up happening right now. It's just before 9 p.m. on Friday, February 3rd, 2023. A train carrying 20 cars of hazardous chemicals passes through the town of Salem, Ohio. As the train speeds through the night, no one notices the sparks and flames underneath one of its cars. And after a few more miles, disaster strikes. Residents of East Palestine hear the train roar into town. But then suddenly, a loud screeching fills the air, followed by the sound of a massive crash. 50 train cars derail in a fiery blaze just outside a residential neighborhood, and 20 of the train's tankers were filled with different types of potent chemicals, all spewing into the ground. It was a toxic disaster that America had not seen in a very long time. But the authorities weren't going to let that truth slip out. So in the days that followed, those in charge made one questionable choice after another. First, they evacuated residents. Thousands of residents under a mandatory evacuation order. Police going door to door, threatening families with children with arrest if they don't leave. The police car came up and said, evacuate, evacuate, evacuate now. Get out, get out. It smelled like really, really strong paint thinner. And then his eyes turned like bloodshot and he started coughing. And I was like, yeah, we're leaving. Then they set fire to the highly toxic chemicals in a controlled release that formed this giant cloud of toxic gas over the town. Days after the derailment, the EPA was forced to admit that the train may have been carrying much more toxic chemicals than first reported. But for some reason, they told everyone it was safe to return. Officials declared that the air and water were definitely safe. But as residents returned, they started experiencing strange symptoms, like their throats burning. They witnessed fish and frogs dying in the streams. Animals were acting weird. At least 11 of the cars that derailed carried the carcinogen vinyl chloride, along with other chemicals used to make adhesives, plastics, and construction materials. But if someone breathes in high levels of something like vinyl chloride, they might experience headaches, dizziness, and increased risk of developing certain types of cancer. Residents who have returned to the evacuation zone have reported headaches and rashes, respiratory issues, and coughing. I can't even put it into words. I was in tears over the headache that I had last night. Symptoms, I also noticed that I have this rash on my arm that was not there before I came here. It doesn't smell safe. I'm taking my things and I'm out of here. I have heard that they have got two dogs that actually drank out of there and died. Yeah, I have headaches. I mean, I, and then the other night when I was coming home from work, I was coming down through Candleton. I could smell it clear down there. You know, my grandkids, their whole lives have been uh, for like upward a day. They're okay. staying in different places because they're afraid to come home. Okay. And I thought maybe they were exaggerating. Yeah. Until I went there just now. Yeah. And my husband, it was like, oh my God, like we had to get out of there. It's bad? Yeah, it's bad. It became very clear that this was the worst man-made disaster America had seen in years. And yet for almost two weeks, there was a media blackout on it. You'd think a disaster of this size would be front page news, but no one seemed to care. No national newspapers reported on it. No mainstream media mentioned it. Not even the Secretary of Transportation, Pete Buttigieg, said a word about what happened. And for good reason. A disaster of this proportion means that there's a lot of money on the line. A lot of lawsuits on the line. And as it turns out, BlackRock owns major shares in both the railway company and the mainstream media outlets. Hmm, interesting. Stay dangerous and welcome to another glitch in the simulation. Respiratory issues, burning eyes, and dead wildlife, including at least 3,500 confirmed dead fish killed by contamination. It's kind of crazy for a small town like this. BlackRock owns a lot of stocks. And if you want some free stocks, you can get up to 12 free stocks when you sign up for Weeble and deposit any amount with the link below. You can literally deposit as little as one cent and you'll still get the free stocks. 
This promotion definitely isn't going to last forever, and it's really easy to claim so you might as well do it with the link below. By opening an account, you're automatically going to get two free stocks, each valued between $3 and $300, and then you'll receive another four or eight or ten free stocks valued between seven and $3,000 after you make an initial deposit of any amount. And if you don't know, Webull is a great commission-free stock trading app that is perfect for you to get set up before the next bull market. They allow you to invest with as little as $5 through fractional shares, where you can own a fraction of a stock from your favorite company or ETF without committing to a whole share. And they even have a stock trading simulator, where you can hone in your skills without putting real money on the line. This is great if you're a beginner, you don't have enough funds yet, you have the capital but don't know where to start, or if you want to test new trading strategies. So get up to 12 free stocks by pausing the video and clicking the link below. Pause the video and click the link below to claim now. Thanks to Webull for sponsoring this video. What you have to understand is that although the railroad business may seem old and antique, it's still a big business. Norfolk Southern, the company that owns the train that was derailed, made over $12 billion in revenue in 2022. But trains are very expensive. So Norfolk Southern had to cut a lot of corners. More than a thousand train derailments occur in America every single year. And yet most modern freight trains still use Civil War era braking systems, including Norfolk Southerns. Why? Because switching out all the Civil War era brakes on every train car with modern brakes is super, super expensive. So when regulators tried to make safer modern brakes mandatory in 2014, Norfolk Southern was one of their biggest opponents. According to them, these new brakes would be extremely expensive without offering quote, offsetting benefit, end quote. Translation? The lawsuits and damage caused by railroad accidents would still cost a lot less than installing new fancy brakes on all their trains. It was a simple cost-benefit analysis. And because railroad transport is so critical to our economy, Norfolk Southern had a lot of political sway to prevent that from going through. But that was far from the only way they cut corners. Most trains carrying hazardous flammable materials are required to report the types, quantities, and risks associated with the chemicals they're transporting. But doing that takes time, it delays shipments, and ultimately it affects your bottom line. So Norfolk Southern lobbied against having to do so. And where did they do this lobbying? In Ohio! According to them, the chemicals on their train just weren't dangerous enough to warrant all the trouble. But that is not all. When railroad workers threatened to strike because they didn't receive enough sick leave, the railroad industry went to complain to their friends in power. So President Joe Biden and Congress immediately moved to block their right to strike, passing new laws that forced the workers to accept an agreement without any sick days at all. Outdated breaks, non-existent safety regulations, and overworked employees all contributed to the derailment of the train in East Palestine. And according to the Railroad Workers Union, the damaged car that caused the derailment could have probably been noticed if train terminals weren't so understaffed. But even after the disaster, there was only one thing on the mind of Norfolk Southern. Profits. You see, the train that crashed was blocking the railroad, which granted that route to a halt. Shipments were being delayed, contracts were being cancelled. For every second that that railroad was not operational, Norfolk Southern was losing money. So they had to do everything in their power to get that railroad back up and running. Basically, we went to town with chemicals so we could get a railroad open. On February 6th, just two days after the disaster, Norfolk Southern and local officials started worrying that something would make the remaining tankers of toxic chemicals explode. The five tankers they worried about contained vinyl chloride, a highly flammable cancer-causing gas that is used to make plastic. If these tankers caught fire, they would not only explode, but they would project a fatal mix of hydrogen chloride and phosgene over the entire town. Phosgene was a gas used in World War I, and thousands of people could be killed and the environment irreversibly damaged. But there was only one problem. Safely removing the tankers away from the fire would probably take weeks. Weeks where the railroad route would not be making any money. So they suggested a risky solution. Do a controlled burn, a controlled explosion. Sure, you would be burning those chemicals into the town's air, but hey, you would be able to move the tankers within a few days or a few hours. And that's exactly what happened. On Sunday, February 6th, more than 8,000 residents of East Palestine were evacuated from their homes. Workers then used small explosions to blow holes in the five tankers to empty their contents into a trench where it was burned away. 
the controlled release resulted in a massive plume of dark, toxic gas hanging over the town for hours afterward. But it got the job done. The train wreckage was cleared, the officials were able to declare the town as safe just two days after the explosion, and what do you know? The railroad was back up and running less than two days later, with trains passing through and all. We basically nuked the town with chemicals so we could get a railroad open. But as the residents started returning home, it didn't take them long to realize that something was massively wrong. At first, officials declared that it was perfectly safe to return home. With the full support and backing of Governor DeWine, I'm happy to announce that the evacuation order is now lifted. Officials said that they hadn't found any cause for concern yet, even though their testing was limited. Next, they declared the water as safe to drink, but then they flip-flopped, with the mayor suggesting that residents stick to bottled water instead. You should never drink tap water, by the way, chemical disaster or not. Video coming out soon on the Evil Food Supply channel, subscribe below. And then, days after the crash, the EPA suddenly discovered that there may have been more toxic chemicals on board than they had initially thought. Today, the EPA said the train that derailed and caught fire in East Palestine, Ohio, was carrying and actually released more toxic chemicals than was first reported. But the people didn't need the EPA to tell them that, because the residents were suddenly experiencing headaches, nausea, rashes, vomiting, and finding strange chemicals in their water. So it didn't take long for the entire town to panic, which leaves the residents of East Palestine in an impossible situation. Thanks to the contamination, they can't sell their homes for anything anymore, which means it's hard for many of them to leave. But if they stay, they have to deal with the fact that they could be poisoning themselves and their children, and that they may not feel the full effects until decades later. And all the officials involved have been doing their best to cover it up. For two weeks, the residents of East Palestine lived in fear and confusion. No one wanted to talk, no one wanted to share information with them. A reporter was even arrested for getting too loud during a town hall meeting where the officials were supposed to answer questions about the derailment. Ten days after the crash, U.S. Transport Secretary Pete Buttigieg spoke to the National Association of Counties, and he said nothing about the crash at all. The literal U.S. Secretary of Transport had nothing to say about the biggest transport disaster of our time. No major news organizations reported on it. To the rest of the country, it seemed like it just never happened. Only once people started returning home and started posting about it on social media, did the rest of the country actually pay attention. And when you start to look into the players involved, you start to maybe understand why. Could it be because one of Norfolk Southern's major shareholders is BlackRock? Could it be because BlackRock also owns significant percentages in Fox, CBS, NBC, CNN, USA Today, and ABC? Maybe. But you want to know what's even stranger? Remember that movie White Noise that predicted this? Well, some of the residents of East Palestine actually starred as extras in that movie. Quote, in real life, the Ratner family was one of the families that evacuated from East Palestine. What was eerie about their story is that several Ratner families had actually worked as extras on White Noise. They were in a scene where cars are gridlocked, trying to escape the town in the toxic smoke, end quote. But who knows? Maybe aliens will finally invade so we can forget all about this. Right now, a new storm is emerging. And incredibly, the culprit may just be sitting on a shelf in your backyard shed. The safety of the country's most popular weed and grass killer called Roundup. Roundup's main ingredient is, quote, probably carcinogenic. The stuff can kill you. And you want to know what other evil company deals with toxic chemicals? Monsanto. Monsanto are the evil geniuses behind Agent Orange that was sprayed over Vietnam. They're behind Roundup and why you have a bunch of glyphosate in your body right now. And they're behind GMO crops. And because of their genius seed licensing scheme, they practically control the entire world's food supply. And you can watch our full private documentary on Monsanto and all its disturbing glory by clicking the card on the screen right now. Click the card on the screen to watch now.